Welcome back to another episode of Train Sim World. And today we'll be doing some switching. I uh, just uh, split up with my uh, crew. Uh, he's heading to the end of the train, and I'm heading over to the end. I already got it started up and ready to go. Uh, join me as we switch. Now, today in modern day, it's typical for two-man crews to do most everything. Gone are the days of the caboose, and gone are the days of four or five-man crew. Set it to reverse. Make sure everything's on and ready. And release the brake. Don't think we need to bail off. We need to bail off. I have it. Do a little throttle. There we go. Little throttle. And we're off. Yeah, one of the wonderful things about Train Sim World is you really can enact the engineer and the conductor. So as we move down the yard, uh, I have presented here today some yard switching, but in a little different than uh, it, what is typically done in the yard. And that we uh, are usually getting uh, cars out of the yard and making up a train to go off to a location somewhere. And that's not what I'm doing today. Um, particularly taking this group of trains and are going to actually spot them within the yard. Uh, I'm doing this because <laughs> this is really what I want to do is deliver cars uh, that is really the purpose of uh, railroading its logistics you know just like in uh, Euro truck you know the purpose is to deliver goods from one place to another place and that's exactly the same thing it's a logistics uh, organization that delivers goods from one place to another and it's been uh, highly uh, disappointing to me that Train Sim World chose not to uh, give us a route that has spots and in industries to deliver goods to. I mean, there are, I think, a dozen towns along the way, you know, from uh, one end uh, to the other is about 40 miles. But, uh, 10 or 12 towns and no places to deliver goods. So there is two coal mines to pull coal out of, uh, but no industries to deliver one or two cars at a time to. So, uh, in the only way possible, I am going to do some deliveries within the yard itself. Uh, and you'll see what I mean. I'm just gonna I'm gonna be able to park a group of gondolas uh, to one section, and then some tank cars to the fuel depot, some hoppers off to the side, and you'll see as I go. But I'll be delivering uh, to different areas of the yard as if they're individual spots. So uh, I've been talking a little bit here. I need to keep an eye out and get this train stopped. So for this next first move, I hop off the back of the train, and switch the points, and then hop back on again. And I want to be on the other side, and we can drop off these hoppers. Now the wonderful thing, now this is the good part of the new generation of train simulation, is uh, we're looking at the 
we're looking at the map here and I'm gonna drop these hoppers off you can't see my mouse in the video but I'll be dropping them off into that one siding uh, in the middle yeah, there, there's the uh, switch point to take us in there. And then we're back here. So we got to go through a few switches and turn them on the way. Yeah, the one wonderful thing is I, I can do both uh, the crew, uh, play both members of the crew, and that is the conductor. And by bringing up the HUD, I'm in camera three, that's keyboard three. Um, and by bringing up the HUD, I liking that as being the, you know, grab the conductor getting hold of his radio and thinking of it as, uh, communicating with the engineer. So what camera three, I'm able to, to bring up the HUD and, and effectively get the, the engine to do, uh, what I need. And in, in true life, the conductor does run the, he has the responsibilities of what's going on with the train and, and the cars and, and the engineer will be uh, really at his command uh, to move the train as, as needed. Uh, he's the, really the, the site. And, uh. You know where he can, he can. He's he's the site there for the for the train engineer. So here we are. We're moving our our hoppers back into place as I ride the rear car. And I gotta say, I do love the fact that in the new train simulation, I can indeed. Uh, hang on to the ladder of the rail car and, and uh, key command 3 for camera 3 I'm able to spin my uh, on the, the camera is able to spin or in likeness my head is able to spin at, uh, on the uh, on the spot I have the camera which is wonderful and then the engineer the engineer can uh, control the uh, train as usual uh, that would be the uh, number one key to get back into the engineer seat but as you see he, he, he cannot uh, he's blind to what's going on with the, with the train as we, we push our cars so he's really dependent on the conductor So, riding the rear car is phenomenal. And so I really was looking forward to doing just this, and, uh, and and of course never being able to do a train simulation 2017 or the earlier versions of Dovetail Games and Train Simulation or even Railworks back when it was Railworks. Uh, the best we can do is uh, is rotate our view around the rear car, but. Uh, not really hold on to the railing like this. So this is fabulous for uh, the typical modern day two-man crew. And I gotta apologize here. I just recently realize that I can increase the performance of my train sim world and I've done so by moving uh, the installation from my mechanical hard drive to my solid state drive so now I got my radio up I'll come back to that in a minute and I'm telling the engineer I got about one car left to go half a car and that'll do so we're gonna go ahead and do a cut so uh, from the conductor's point of view um, I can float my camera and also 
do a protection here, which is the, what we call the three-step protection. We put the train into neutral, make sure we have the air brake on full. And the third point is turning the generator off. I'm not quite sure how to do that, but I believe here switching the generator field switch on off would essentially do that three-point protection. And then the train conductor, uh, before he does the cut, he's going to put the handbrake on this, this car here. And he can get in between now. He has a three-point protection. The brake is applied. And go back and do the cut. And there we are, and uncoupled. And we can give the clear and let the engineer know that we're ready to go. And of course, with camera three, I can just go ahead and climb right back up the ladder and hang on as we take off. And <laughs> I forgot to turn the... Uh, generator switch back on so popping back into the engineer's cab I can turn that on release the brake bail off and put it into reverse do a little notch on the throttle and off we go for the next uh, next delivery so we got a handful of hoppers out of the way. And those were the open coal hoppers. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, spot off two of the two of these hoppers. Yeah, so I apologize for the uh, I don't have the best graphic settings. I got everything set on low so uh, including uh, the foliage so we don't have a lot of trees to look at and uh, it's just not the the best that train sim world has to offer <laughs> and I the reason why I apologize is not that I, I don't have anything to do with the optimization of course of train sim world but I I did find out that I can make it uh, much better and I have currently of uh, whoops I'm talking so much I forgot to stop the train yeah we're gonna go ahead and back our hoppers back up into that next over to the left that next drop-off point come over here make the switch yeah by switching over to um, uh, I mean, doing my my train sim world and moving the the install folder for Steam from the the current hard drive over to my new solid state drive, I got much better frame rates, and I'm currently running train sim world at higher frame rates than than I am in this video, and I have it set to to uh, higher um, graphics, and I'm still getting better frame rates. So it's it's really beautiful looking now for me. Uh, but you don't get to enjoy that in the video because uh, unfortunately I did it right after I finished all this stuff. And I just don't want to go back and redo. Uh, you know, I, ha I could. I mean, I could go back and redo the whole video, but it's, uh, it's all about switching more than it is about... Uh, you know, high graphics. I... I, I this is to me as you watch this I think you're gonna enjoy the what I'm doing here because uh, it gives you a really good understanding how a two-man crew would work together and how train sim world currently allows you to do it uh, but unfortunately I would I you're doing it with the camera view three and sometimes you use eight if you want free cam where you can walk around free and I, I shouldn't say walk around. You can float around with the camera free of the, the train movement. Camera view three locks you in to uh, any set point you want to place it near the train. And so right now I locked into the 
to the ladder of the rear car, which is phenomenal. But had the developers of Train Sim World been thinking, uh, since now with the Unreal Engine we're able to walk freely around, uh, it would have been great if the conductor was the one walking and the train engineer was the one trapped to the seat uh, to a camera view. Uh, and I don't know why they didn't think of that. Maybe there's maybe there's some reasons, but uh, I can't imagine why. But right now, uh, you, if when you're in um, when you're in uh, walk mode, you're unable to uh, control the engine. And uh, if they're able to make a change on that, where they can give us keyboard commands and control the engine while we're on foot. That would be fantastic. So this is uh, all we need here. We're going to drop off these two hoppers. And uh, three-point protection, of course. Yeah. Definitely get in between these two cars and uh, apply the handbrake. We don't want these... Uh, rolling away after we take off and do our cut and then we're waiting for the engineer to give us the to go apply the handbrake cut the cars And climb aboard this uh, tank car and then our next drop off will be this tank car give the engineer the all clear that we're ready to fly thing about uh, actually doing switching operations they're not they're not all that quick it takes a while to make these uh, these moves and if some of you have watched my model railroading videos uh, one of the things is understanding what has to go on in reality as we're, you know, in, and in, uh, what we're doing here in virtual reality uh, takes a, quite a while to, to cut cars and couple up and uncouple and that kind of thing. Uh, something that modelers can learn to not do things so quick and just uh, flying around track and dropping off uh, model cars. Yeah, I think we want to Yeah, I keep blowing past these switch points. We want to go ahead and see where we're going now. I'm going to throw that switch back to normal settings so nothing goes in with those hoppers. And here I'm using camera, the free cam number, uh, keyboard command 8 in order to hang out by the point and then grab a hold of the train as it comes by. Well, what we want to do with this uh, hopper then is to move it into the uh, fuel depot uh, to deliver fuel to the, for the, for the fuel tanks there. Yeah, looks kind of funny in the mountaintops. You see dispersed trees. Uh, with the, I got the foliage set to low. 
and uh, let me hop off here and switch out this point I got the foliage set to low and it's just kind of terrible looking but like I said I uh, I fixed that problem so in future videos and I sure do hope to be putting out some future videos uh, they'll be in better uh, better graphics mode So you can see the HUDs up, and so like I said, I liken that to having my handheld radio for communication with the engineer. And it always is fun to, to ride the rear car and look forward and watch the whole train going down the track. Kind of hanging out looking. But uh, riding the train like this we really end up being the engineers uh, eyes and ears and cause he's kind of blind back there on his own or her the funny thing is at the beginning of this uh, uh, I was going to say scenario but yeah the beginning of this scenario I uh I went ahead and walked around and turned all of the engines off. I mean, I manually went and walked through in the, in the walk mode, turned each of the engines off. And here I made a few switches and I'm coming back and you can hear them running. And so, you know, I don't understand that. How a train sim world... has made a decision to automatically get trains up and running and ready to play I mean it's just uh, you know it'd be one thing if when you boot it up in the morning and they were that way but when I went and turned them off so I decided uh, I'd take a good walk uh, using free cam and switch this point out and we can watch the the train pull on up from from uh, a standing uh, our conductor standing here instead of riding now yeah I can have the hut up or I can turn it off since I just use it for my radio contact and for controlling the engine really uh, I don't need to have it on all the time. And it's kind of silly that I am having to float the camera around. I'm not able to walk on foot. Even though this new generation allows you to walk on foot. But like I said, when you're on foot, you can't control the engine. So, uh, this is a workaround. I like it though. I, I think it's nice. It's... Uh, and I really, I'm, I'm enjoying the fact that I'm able to drop off cards. I know I'm only able to do it in this yard because there's no other drop-offs. Although I'm going to explore that. I mean, I say that now. I want to explore this route a little bit more and see what other ways I can work around and find other spots I can drop off to. So, coming back here, I almost forgot. I need to set the handbrake. And then I can go cut the car. Yep. So we're... Yeah, the other thing is... Uh, in the simulation... It really has some nice... Uh, graphic and visual effects... With the uncoupling and all. But the hoses... Uh, in reality, the hoses wouldn't break free until we stretched the train out and they uncoupled and then the last thing would be the hoses break free, but uh, in the simulation, as soon as you uncouple, the hoses also uncouple. So, little nitpicking there. But
it is amazing all the things that they're doing now uh, and with the vibrations and the, the hoses do move around and they're not stiff and, and so I mean, a lot of things are simulated now that weren't in the past and it is uh, quite good to get past this running engine A lot of the engines have the analog display for the speed, which in virtual reality is sometimes difficult to read unless you magnify yourself real close to it. So I like the particular engine we're using now. Uh, when, we, when we jump back in, you'll see that uh, it has a digital readout for speed, which is a, you can easily read. Um, and Gotta be careful here. I'm setting up again. We're gonna move. I'm gonna move a couple more hoppers back into that same branch that I moved the first two in. Uh, as soon as we get by it. And hop off here and switch the points. and climb back up again. Yeah, and so uh, back into the engine. Yeah, back of the engine you can see the speedometer is a digital readout and I really like this one that's why I chose this engine for today's activities it makes it nice when we're doing a lot of switching and let's see what speeds we're going at so back to the conductor view and I love looking back and seeing the cars coming around the corner and we'll find a place to spot these two these next two hoppers Making sure, going slow here, making sure I get it. Going, everything's the. Uh, yep. A little more. Yeah, I gotta switch this. Let's see. I'm Which way am I going? Oh, yeah. I want to put these two hoppers back along. See that blue building up ahead? Right to the left of that building. That's where they're going. It's a little confusing We're trying to look from the distance. That uh, that rail right to the immediate right of me is is actually going up against the building. I need to switch this switch. It's already signaling red, which means it is going to curve. I don't need to stop. I, need, I can go right on in. Yes, yeah, so this train sim world does have some performance issues, uh, optimization issues. I think they've improved it some with what some are saying. 
I'm using this on a laptop and uh, it's not the best and the latest and the greatest and so I, I don't have the best frame rates um, but like I said I've, I've moved it to my solid state drive and on my laptop and it's so much better than what we're getting in this video but uh, here as the conductor is the eyes and ears and for the engineer four cars and begin to call out over the radio three cars two cars one more that'll do and jump on off Whoop. remember to set the handbrake let's be on the other side and cut the car here we go and we're all clear I'm going to go over to the other side here. I want to be on this side. And then let the engineer know we're ready to go. I love it. Uh, love me able to hang on the back of the car now. It ride along as the conductor would. So, uh, actually I have a little bit more to do, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut these three tank cars uh, outside the video and then come back for a second part and uh, show you a runaround maneuver and, and then get these two freight cars, these two box cars and, and park them over on the other side of the yard. And that'll be that's a little bit different type of maneuver, and so I'm going to do another part for that. And uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed this and learned a little bit. I certainly did, and we'll catch you next time.